Between the ages of 18 and 28, I spent most of my life in prison. I started off down a destructive path that led me to losing my freedom and being locked away in some of the UK's toughest prisons. I ended up thriving in prison. I had a shop selling smuggled items. I even had staff bringing in goods for me. It all started very differently though. Back in Portland prison when I was 18, it was my proving ground and I had to dig deep within myself to learn how to survive. I was reborn, but probably not for the better. At 25, I was looking at life in prison. I'd thrown away any chance I'd been given, and I was looking at rotting in prison. Here, today, I'm uh, completely crime-free. It's been 10 years since I got out of prison, and I've been making podcasts about how to, uh, how to, my experiences in, in prison, and basically how to survive in and out of prison. So I thought today I'd kind of accumulate all of that information together, um, and my, give you my my top 10 tips for surviving in prison and what I had to do and what I would recommend other people do to survive in the UK prison system. Okay, so number one on the list, um, my best recommendation to anyone going into prison for the very first time um, is to keep your head down. Now what I mean by this is nobody likes young little upstarts bouncing onto the wing causing ruckus and and trouble and being loud and uh, basically a lot of you know your mates outside may have told you that in prison you've got to prove yourself and uh, you know you hear all this crap about pick the biggest guy in the prison yard and go and beat him up on day one um, just so you can show everybody how tough you are now that's um, that's a first class ticket to getting yourself killed in prison Um, (laughs) so that's the worst advice you could do my best advice to anyone who's new in prison um, day one maybe the first week or so, it's just to keep your head down. Um, try not to uh, to stick out too much and essentially don't jump on anybody's toes um, because the worst thing you can do is uh, get yourself into trouble um, in your first few weeks or get known as a bit of a dickhead um, or as a troublemaker. Like I say, the old boys on the wing, there may be some lifers on your wing um, who don't like any commotion and trouble. Um, some of the older boys and some of the older criminals are definitely not going to like people who um, who cause any trouble for them or any uh, any kind of you know operation or situation they've got going on on the wing, um, and even you know you're looking at wings that people live on. You know there might be people in there doing ten, fifteen years, um, and that's their home that you're walking into. All right. So, like I say, my best advice for the first few weeks of your sentence until you've kind of tested the waters a little bit, just keep your head down. My tip number two um, would don't be a don't be a shitbag. Essentially. Everything you do in prison, you have to be able to hold your head up high. Um, I've said before that the bar is pretty low in prison. Everyone's in there for doing something. Everyone's in there for breaking the law in some way. Um, but there is still an honour to be had amongst thieves. And um, some of the older boys, again, some of the older criminals, will not want anything to do with you um, for the crime you've done um, or for the way that you hold yourself in prison sometimes. All right. So even though you're in amongst criminals and dirt bags and crooks and thieves and bullies and and all the rest of it my best uh, best advice for you um, again don't be a shitbag hold yourself high in prison if you borrow something from someone um, pay it back on time you know pay it back in an orderly way go and go and give it to them when it's uh, canteen day you know the last thing people want when they're in prison is to be running around chasing debts from people um, so yeah if you've borrowed something pay it back and go and pay it back on time don't be starting trouble on the wing, you know, running round. Nobody likes people running up and down the landing, shouting across, causing trouble. Um, you, you know, generally, a lot of people have, might have something going on, you know, and you don't want officer attention on the landing or, you know, officers wandering up and down the landing because uh, you're being a shitbag, you know, causing commotion. You'll see a lot of people borrowing stuff, um, knowing full well that they're going to get shipped out um, or they're moving to another wing or they're going to be going home, for example. Um, so they'll borrow as much tobacco as they can off the tobacco dealers on the wing and uh, knowing full well they're going to be you know, off the next day. Now, this is a very short-term, short-gain um, situation, uh, so it's very short-sighted because a lot of these little shitbags, uh, they end up back in prison again within weeks and months or you will bump into people. Um, me, even 10 years after being in prison, I'm still bumping into occasionally people that I've been in prison with um, and if I was a shitbag back then, you know, it could still end up me being in trouble now. 
um, especially in the southwest of uh, the UK. It's, it's, a, it's a small place. Um, so, again, just like I say, hold yourself up in prison with a, you know, an element of honour. Um, follow the guidelines in prison and don't be a shitbag. Now, tip number three, um, get in shape as quickly as you can. Uh, you may have a lot of time to kill in prison. You've got a lot of time behind your door. Um, even without the COVID and everything that's going on at the moment, a lot of people are telling me that there's 23-hour bang-up, even up to today in, uh, in Exeter Prison and, and Dartmoor and, and other places. Um, get yourself in shape. Um, so sign up for the gym. Um, as soon as you can get your gym orderly, as soon as you can get a gym induction, uh, get yourself down the gym, get in shape. Um, start doing circuit training, play some football. Um, you'll, you'll be offered two or three weight sessions as well. And once you become enhanced, then you get more gym. Um, that gives you more opportunity to get down the gym um, and get out of your cell. Now, when you are in your cell, press-ups, sit-ups, squats, um, you can be doing all of these things. Star jumps, you can sit there and do 45 minutes of star jumps if you want. Um, I used to pretend to skip. So, you know, without a skipping rope, obviously they don't give you a skipping rope in prison, but you can still do the motion. You can do, you know, do the hopping up and down and, and swinging your arms around like you've got a skipping rope, um, but you just haven't got all the ball ache of it getting whipped around your head and, uh, and feet. <laughs> Yeah, so take the opportunity that you have in prison because it's very, very easy uh, to sit around on your bed playing uh, Playstations or watching telly, being a soap addict, all of that kind of bullshit. Take the opportunity in prison to uh, to get in shape because you're never going to have this much free time with absolutely nothing to do again. And also, the added benefit of being in shape means that you have um, a bit of muscle and a bit of definition and a bit of core strength to then be able to look after yourself. Now, tip four out of 10 um, for how to survive in prison live within your means now I have been absolutely brassic in prison before I've been broke I've had no no outside support living on uh, the, the £7.50 I think it was back then £7.50 a week um, I think if you're unemployed it goes down to something like £3.50 a week um, so you quickly want to get yourself on an education course or some sort of uh, one of the workshops um, and I think then it goes up to seven pound fifty a week. If you get yourself on some sort of uh, vocational course, or you know, sometimes the recycling or kitchens, things like that, you can you can end up getting up to about fifteen pound a week um, in prison. Now, that is a high paid job. Um, sometimes when you can get onto the um, the canteen, uh, some of the canteen, if they're done by outside agencies, which they are now, you can end up getting paid a lot more, up to you know twenty, and sometimes up to fifty pounds a week um, with some of these outside. Uh, agency jobs um, but yeah definitely live within your means in prison this is going to be very difficult for some people uh, because you know tobacco a lot of people smoke actually what am I saying now it's not even um, in the old days it used to be tobacco it's it's vape sticks now so if you have to smoke you know how much do you spend on vape sticks um, it's going to be about half your canteen if you need to get hold of people on the phone that's, that's going to be the other half of your canteen gone so you need shower gels you know you're going to want condiments you know, salt, pepper, um, tomato ketchup, mayonnaise, things like this. You're going to want something to try and make your food taste better. Um, you're also going to need noodles um, and things to eat in outside of the meal times because food isn't very nutritious in prison. Um, and if you want to grow or survive or get in shape, you're going to need to add to your uh, to your diet as well. So it's very difficult to um, get everything you need to get and live on a prison wage. Now, if you're lucky enough to have friends or family on the outside who are sending you in a bit of money, you know, even that extra sort of tenner a week can make a difference. And that's going to be able to help you being able to buy bits and pieces uh, and maybe even a couple of treats for yourself, you know, a bag of crisps or a bar of chocolate every now and then. Um, but, uh, yeah, living within your means is very difficult in prison. If you need to smoke, and a lot of people are addicted to obviously smoking, um, then, you know, in prison you've got the opportunity to borrow and tick items on. Now, this gets expensive because it's a lot of what they call double bubble in prison. So imagine now if you get a vape stick, you've probably got to pay two back. Um, and even things like if you have smuggled some, some drugs in or, you know, some tobacco or something like that, you know, you're going to have to pay for a lighter in prison now because lighters aren't currently available. But there are some knocking around on the wing, but you have to pay for them. Um, so, you know, you've, uh, you can quickly get yourself in debt. Um, and when you get in debt in prison, you're either going to get your head kicked in if you can't pay it back, or you're going to have to run off onto the protection wing. Now, it's not a good time on the protection wing because um, you're on the same wing as the nonces and the paedophiles and the rapists and the police. 
all of those kind of caliber of people um so you're going to be tarred with the same brush as them you know you're going to be in the same boat as them if you uh end up slipping and running off the wing because you owe money so live within your means is the um one of the best bits of advice i can give you i have spent in my early days in prison when i wasn't able to hustle any money in prison i wasn't able to generate any income for myself I had no support from the outside, so there'd be some weeks when I wouldn't buy anything at all on canteen, and I'd just let that £7.50 roll over to the next week, um, and then I'd spend a bit more. Um, I'd spend you know, around a tenner on bits of stuff for myself, and then I'd try and let the money roll over again. Um, so every other week or every couple of weeks, I'd just make sure I didn't spend any money at all, just to kind of uh, you know, just to try and save a little bit. But it's really difficult, you know, you've really got to live like a monk in prison and it's not an enjoyable experience. Um, it was really, really tough to try and get through that. Um, obviously, you know, later on in life, uh, things were a lot easier and I was, you know, you learn how to gamble and win in prison um, and uh, you know how to uh, trade items. So what I would sometimes do is I would gamble, get myself um, some half ounces of tobacco and then I'd trade those half ounces of tobacco for things that I needed um, you know, like shower gels and, and food and, and protein powders, things like that. So, you know, you, once you learn how to hustle in prison, then you can also um, start to make some money. But that's obviously a risky business as well. And that can end up with you being in debt. So, yeah, live within your means. Um, that would be one of my uh, one of my top tips towards you. OK, so tip number five. Be careful who you mix with. All right. So the, the, the company you keep in prison um, is important. OK, because uh, it's, again, that, that brush that you're tarred with. All right. So and it can also shape the way that you are in prison and um, the way that you are when you get out and also, uh, you know, how the how the staff treat you in prison as well. Now, there's all sorts of walks of life in prison. Um, you've got your know, career criminals um, to, you know, drug addicts who end up falling into prison just because, you know, they can't live any other way. Um, you've got people who are normal straight goers who have ended up falling into prison because they've broken a law unexpectedly um, and you've got people who are just you know casually in and out of prison every now and then um, you know maybe once every couple of years but you'll naturally fall into your group of people um, the way the prison routine is set up is you know you're you're forced to socialize with people all the time um, you know they'll throw you into an education class with 20 30 people you don't know or they'll put you into a workshop with you know ten or fifteen people that you don't know from all different wings. Um, so you, you you know you're quickly forced to socialise um, with lots of different people all the time. Um, you're constantly thrown into situations where you don't know anybody, and uh, you know you have to have to quickly go through that you know hi how are you um, scenario. Now the main icebreaker in prison for a lot of the time is what you're in for. You know you go all right mate what are you in for. And uh, they'll tell you what they're in for and then you tell them you know, and you just start, you know, talking about what you're in for. You know, you'll start talking about your crime um, or, you know, and that's how you normally uh, start to uh, get to know people. Now, you can also fall into groups um, kind of geographically. So uh, me being from the southwest, um, a lot of the time I would fall into groups that were from Cornwall um, or from uh, sort of Cornwall and Devon anyway. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of how you end up just falling into the groups that you, you end up mixing with in prison. But the last thing you want to do is get yourself into groups of people who are who are almost looking to start trouble. You know, sometimes if you're getting yourself into a group who are bringing drugs in or are drug addicts and they're constantly looking for someone to rip off or, you know, constantly looking at how they're getting their next fix, um, then it's it's akin to being part of a kind of gang of dogs, really. And uh, it's they're all backstabbing each other and you're going to get yourself in trouble, extra days, get yourself more charges. Um, it really is the last thing, the really, really sorry scenario that you want to find yourself in prison is getting yourself more time while you're in prison. Um, there was one lad I was even in with. He got himself an ASBO while he was in prison. Can you imagine getting yourself an ASBO in prison? There are some people who never want to live their life any other way. Um, they, I know once I'd been in and out of prison so many times, uh, it, it almost became easier for me in prison than it was outside. I mean, maybe it, maybe it wasn't easier, but it was it was it was just as easy for me to live in prison as it was outside because I knew how the place worked. I knew how how pr prisons live and breathe. You know, you know who the movers and shakers are on the wing, and you know how to approach them and, and do business with them and things. And it's 
you know, it became just as easy for me after a while, like I say, to survive in prison and thrive as it was out of it. So, again, be careful who you mix with. Um, if you're mixing with career criminals, you may find yourself going down that path. If you're mixing with a load of hooligans, then you may find yourself going down that path also. But also drug addicts, you know, so many drug addicts in prison, they don't, they don't cure, they don't save themselves. All they're doing is they're looking for the next high. So, yeah, just be careful who you mix with in prison because um, that can uh, definitely shape your path and your future. Now, tip number six on the list. Um, it's pretty much number one in the rule book um, of, uh, of crime. And it's uh, don't ever, ever, ever grass on anyone in or out of prison. Now, it's, uh, it seems quite easy to, um, to say this and to, to live by it for a lot of people. But I promise you there are so many people out there who crumble under pressure and will sell out everything and everyone they know uh, to try and get themselves out of trouble or try and get themselves a lesser sentence. And, uh, you know, these people, it might have been difficult for the first time or second time that they started snitching on people. But some of these people, they've been doing it for a long time now and they go running into the office or they or they drop applications into the uh, into the application box with people's names on it and situations that are going on. Um, but yeah, these people will grass you up and they will, uh, they will sell their soul um, to get themselves out of trouble. So the last thing you ever want to do in prison is, um, is, is tell any other prisoners about stuff that you've heard or what's going on with anybody other pris- any of the other prisoners. Um, and the last thing you want to do is talk to any member of staff about, um, about what's going on with any other prisoner or any other situation. Things that can get you in trouble that you may not even realise um, is phone calls. When you you know you may be on the phone talking to your girlfriend and go, oh my god, you know this happened or oh my god that happened. Um, all the phone calls are listened to and recorded, um, so you've got to be careful with that. And also writing home as well. All the all the letters are read going out, and that can all be used as evidence. Um, this is what's called dry snitching. <laughs> so um, it can be snitching without even realising it. So yeah, just um, just don't ever talk about anything you've. Uh, heard about other prisoners doing or anything that you can uh, see other people doing it it never benefits you and like I say most people end up in and out of prison or you may bump into people out of prison that you've uh, stitched up outside in you know inside prison um, and again it, this falls back to uh, back to rule number two and not being a shitbag you know don't be a grass just you know be a man deal with your problems yourself sometimes you can be given information so say for example um, an inmate can come up to you and tell you that there can be a big amount of drugs moved or maybe that someone's going to be killed on the wing they're going to say look this guy's a, a nonce or a grass and we're going to kill him we uh, you know we want you to stay out of the way now if you go run into the screws you may be the only person that they've told that information and it's a test to see if you're a fucking grass um so if you go run into the screws before it's even happened and then uh, you know somehow the staff find out that this person was going to get killed or you know, the person who told you suddenly gets a cell search um, they're going to know that you're the one that gave the information. All right, so you might think you're doing the right thing and trying to save someone's life, but it's a fucking test. All right, so the best thing you can do is just stay out of it. He's not your friend. You don't know these people. Um, it's not on you if uh, if that person dies. That may be a harsh way of living, but it's um, it's survival of the fittest in prison, and you've got to make sure that you survive. So um, yeah, don't ever talk to the staff, even if you think that uh, you're doing the right thing. Now, tip number eight for uh, surviving in the UK prison system. Um, my best advice uh, for this would be uh, not to be an addict. So do not be an addict in prison. Prison is difficult enough without that screaming addiction uh, going through your veins and that uh, constant need to then source, supply and, uh, and pay for drugs in prison. Now, this isn't me saying that don't take drugs in prison, um, I was always smoking weed in prison, um, if I could get hold of it. Um, I've taken cocaine in prison, I've taken ecstasy, I've taken LSD um, in prison. Um, but I was never addicted to it, I was never dependent on it, and I never needed to take the drugs. Um, I was just taking them because we, we had access to them. So, so many people you see coming in and out of prison, especially the remand prisons, um, in Exeter especially, I would say at any time at least a half or a third of the wing was addicted to heroin. Um, while I was there you'd constantly see a long line of people at the medical hatch 
um, at lunch times and at uh, and at evening meal times, getting their um, their their methadone scripts and any other drugs that would help them. Obviously, taking you know getting off the getting off the heroin and getting off other drugs that they say they're on. Um, you never see these guys change. You know, these would be the same people you'd see in and out of prison. Um, they'd always be addicts and they'd always be doing the same thing. Um, you know, you'd see people once they get through to Dartmoor and, and other jails and they'd still be addicted and they'd still be, you know, smoking heroin as soon as it gets on the wing. And you can just see it from a mile off, you know, the same way that you can tell cocaine addicts at a fucking party. You can see the heroin addicts, that are, you know, on the wing. Because they all bunch around together, they're all skinny as fuck. They're all, you know, the 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 prison tracksuits are hanging off them, um, and then they'll spend a couple of days just locked up in their cell, you know, just sleeping, dripping, um, you know, just completely off their face. And then when you see them walking around on the wing, their eyes are all fucking droopy and and, and bloodshot. So, yeah, then you've got to pay for it. All right, so you've either got people to send you money in, and I've told you, you know, most people are surviving on seven pound fifty a week. So, and uh, a deal of heroin is ten quid. So you can already see that, um, you know, you're going to have an issue if you want to, uh, you know, smoke heroin in prison. So, yeah, my best advice is if uh, if you do have a drug problem, use prison as the opportunity to get clean. The worst thing you can do is be an addict in prison. Um, it's going to lead you to possibly going back to rule number two and end up being a shitbag. <laughs> so yeah, don't be an addict in prison. Tip number nine out of ten for uh, the UK sub- Prison Survival Guide. Keep your cell clean. Now, uh, this might sound like a, a lot of people don't, you know, this may sound like a weird thing, but a lot of people don't keep their cell clean um, in prison. They see it as, this is the prisoner's, this is the prison's uh, cell, this isn't my cell, they're holding me against my will. You know, and they trash it, and they it's dirty, and they don't clean, they don't dust, they don't get in the corners and, you know, wipe anything down. Um, they just live like fucking animals. Uh, so, yeah, and, and you, you kind of, you just get these view of people as if, you know, you walk past their cell and you can smell it from the outside. Um, and then you look inside and they're rotting in their bed, the blankets are everywhere, the sheets are everywhere, and there's just tea bags on the table, and, you know, there's just stains on everything, and the floor's filthy, you know, there's like actual dust. Because when you open the door, sometimes that might be the only way of getting any ventilation in. Um, and you'll see like dust blow across their cell um, as you open up the door. Now, these people are fucking animals. <laughs> um, anyone who I always was in a cell with, anybody who I knew, always kept their cell clean. Um, it's your home for the next however long. Uh, so the first thing I would always do when you're in a cell is I'd normally get the little cleaning products that they give you and scrub the place down, clean the floors, clean the tables, clean any of the walls where people have touched, uh, all around the beds where people have touched. You know, you scrub the toilet. Um, and, you know, because that's, that's your place. That's your, you know, it may be a shoebox, but it's your shoebox um, and you've got to survive there. Um, one thing we always used to do as well with the, uh, to try and get a nice smell in the, in the, in the cell because you've got two pipes at the back of the cell. Most, most cells will either have one big fat pipe or they'll have two slightly smaller pipes, and it pumps hot water up and down the wing, and that's your basically your central heating to try and keep your cell warm. Um, and what what you do to try and get a nice smell in the cell is you'd sometimes when you get those magazines like FHM or Loaded, uh, Men's Health things like this, they used to have a little tear out bit in it, and it would have a folded over section with um, some aftershave. And you you know you'd unfold the section and you'd smell it and it would it would it would smell like you know CK1 or Tommy Hilfiger or whatever it was they're advertising. Um, so you'd rip out that piece from the magazine and you'd rub the uh, the free sample all over the pipes on your cell, and and maybe for the next week um, your cell would then smell like CK1 or something like this. <laughs> so that was sometimes a good reason just to get the FHMs and the magazines each month was uh, you know just for those uh, aftershave pullouts just to make your cell smell clean. But yeah, anyone who's serious in prison, people are going to look down on you if um, if you live like a tramp and you've uh, got a dirty cell. So you're not doing it for your, uh, you're not doing it for the officers. Um, you're doing it for yourself, and you're doing it to uh, to make sure that people want to talk to you in prison. <laughs> now, rule number ten, um, and this will probably be the best advice I can give to you, and it's uh, essentially learn to take advantage of your situation. All right, now that covers across the board everything that you need to do. 
All right, so learn to take advantage of the situation you're in. Get yourself a tactical advantage, whatever you're doing. All right, so you don't have many freedoms in prison. You don't have many opportunities to do things. But when you do get an opportunity, so I'll take, for example, when I was gym orderly in uh, HMP Exeter, uh, I was there for around nine months. Uh, and over that time, I got to know the staff quite well. Now, you're always in a staff situation, so they're always prison staff and you're always a criminal. You're always a prisoner. So there's never, you know, with them, there was never really, a, you know, a, a blurring of the line too much. But, you know, you would befriend them. You would help them out if they had a, a fucking circuit session that they needed to take, but they were hung over because it was Sunday morning. You tell them, look, you know, you just go and put your feet up for a minute. I'll go and take the circuit. Um, and then, you know, the next weekend when they come in, they might bring you in a bacon sandwich or they might bring you in a, a fucking, you know, they, uh, some of the staff used to um, go to the bakery and bring in some cream buns and stuff like this. Now, there's a fine line, obviously, um, between making the most of your situation and taking advantage of it um, and then being what they call a screw boy. Um, now, a screw boy is like a teacher's pet, that sort of thing, you know, the, the one who runs around uh, making the staff cups of teas and things and, and you know, giving them information and bits and pieces. Now, that they're, they're kind of termed as screw boys because they're just basically trying to get you know, a little bit more time out of their cell for uh, for running around after the staff. But what I'm saying about doing is you're making the most of your situation. You know, you're getting the staff to bring you in something from the outside that you can't get in prison. Um, and all you have to do is maybe take a circuit session or referee a football session. You know, something that makes their life a little bit easier. And, uh, and then you get a reward that uh, nobody else in the prison is getting. Now, making the most of your situation as well um, can be if you've got... 10 years in prison if you're looking at a 15 year sentence then educate the fuck up you know you could become a fucking masters at history um, by the time you get out you could be a professor um, you could have earned yourself 10 different trades you know you could become a financial whiz um, make the most of the time you have and start from day one you know get hold of the open university um, start learning start getting on that path you're always looking at you know to make the most of your situation that you have right now I always found that being on the enhanced regime um, was always the best for me because you get to spend the most money, you get the most visits and you get the most time out of your cell. Um, you also get extra gym sessions. You know, enhanced prisoners get more gym sessions. So even though I was a shit bag and I was, you know, selling stuff and I was getting stuff thrown over the walls and doing this and that, I was always still on enhanced. And to the, to, you know, to the staff, I was always a fairly modern prisoner, model prisoner. Um, but, you know, I'd be making the most. I'd be always trying to, you know, turn the situation to my advantage any way I could. So, yeah, there's a there's a fine line of how you handle yourself in prison. You know, you, you, you don't want to be not doing anything wrong and rotting away down on the twos landing, you know, keeping your head down too much. But you also don't want to be too loud, wild and aggressive. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself down the block all the time. You know, you want to get on with the staff, but you don't want to be a screwboy. Um, so, yeah. If you follow the guide and just try and keep yourself out of trouble in prison, but realise that uh, you've got to keep your head above water, you've got to defend yourself, you occasionally may need to fight every now and then, but uh, the main thing is to not be a shitbag, don't be a grass, and always live within your means. Thank you very much for your time. Like, subscribe, share, and we'll uh, I'll speak to you again.